Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, <clears throat> Professor Barry here. And I, the, the point of this, uh, or the idea of this particular short video lecture, it's not even a lecture, just a background information, just to kind of get you set and prepared for the article for the week and then for the film uh, that you're going to watch for the week. Um, we've already talked about cultural studies, so I'm not going to go through all that again, but I am going to give some highlights just in preparation again for the article and the film. Um, and we're going to talk about, we've already gone over the three elements, but we're going to label them the tripartite approach, just the language that's used in academic discourse to talk about um, these different areas. So if we can recall, like the focus of cultural studies was to examine the system of media, the system that's, you know, this institutional institutions that are uh, putting out stuff in culture, uh, whether that be film or music or fashion, that more in part, because if you go back, remember like back prior to the 1950s, you know, we were, we were definitely were consuming, but our rate of consumption really started to increase post-World War II. And then again, 1980s and 1990s, just like we're in the space of a lot of technologies coming out our way, um, a lot of mass, mass media influences, um, go back to early newsprint. That's how people got exposed to information and then move to radio and then we get advertising, but it's coming through, you know, uh, radio waves into people's homes. And we get 1950s, we get the television and the image marketing and advertising, as we'll talk about later on the term, um, like this, this sort of development. So cultural study starts to get into a space of like, we need to spend some time in figuring out how we're going to study culture, popular culture, because it can have such an influence on our ways of thinking and knowing and what we decide to do as a culture and society and looking at uh, social issues and social problems. So cultural studies is trying to understand, trying to analyze, developing a model for analysis, and that's the tripartite approach. Tri meaning three, three-part approach of examining things that are within popular culture. And the three are very distinct and they all have their own level of analysis. I remember reading an article when I was in my doctoral program about uh, rock and roll and the development of rock and roll using the focus was on the production of culture and the political economy. And part of the perspective, there's a lot of different factors. I'll just give one that the development of and the place of the, of the FM radio and FM radio, so in cars, it was usually AM, but now all of a sudden we get FM radio and then the transistor radio, people could have a handheld radio. Like markets started to change because of this new technology. People could be exposed to music in a different way because of this new technology. Uh, this So the political economy is addressing these kind of things. Like let's looking at the management structure, what is the philosophy? What is the goals of, of management? Or, um, you know, like what is the focus on is our, you know, is it a large corporation? Is it a small independent company? Like what's the organization like and the ethos or the, the idea of the organization? What about worker demographics? Like who are, who are the editors in terms of race and class and gender, uh, sexual orientation? Who are the producers? Uh, so thinking about the, the organization and the structure of these institutions that are producing culture. And as we can kind of see, as we'll get into this film a little bit, like I think the production of culture made a difference in representations of indigenous community of Native Americans on film. This is a story a little bit about the production of culture or the political economy of Hollywood and its change over a long period of time. So one thing to think about is the difference between Hollywood production and independent film production and how those two different production systems uh, influence demographics of who the directors and producers are, who the writers are, screenwriters are, who the actors are, and the characterization influencing, you know, the characterization or what uh, roles these particular characters occupy. Other things that the political economy could be things like, um, Okay, technologies that are interested in their impacts, distribution networks, how do how does how do uh, products get distributed throughout uh, a nation or a global community? So we kind of think about that for a moment, where 
with emerging technologies, new technologies that Hollywood or any institution can distribute their products at a mass scale that was impossible 15, 20 years ago. So new technologies allowing for new ways for content to be distributed. This is all political economy, organization structure. Textual analysis is analyzing the text. So representations, language, um, I guess we may go back to representation, representation, misrepresentations, how are people being represented? How are groups of people being represented? What roles do they occupy? What is their character? What are the, what are the general themes within their character? What are the consistent patterns we find within a character uh, or characterization uh, or someone representing a particular group? Um, so I always try to encourage students to think about, we're talking about patterns, not individual. So in looking at this film they're gonna watch, it's not about necessarily just the, the that one film and that one character. It's like that's part of a larger pattern. And they're just using these examples to illustrate a larger pattern. And sometimes, I don't know, and there could be a conversation about a representation or something going on within culture and uh, the media or we are academics are discussing this one item. Sometimes, unless you're, sometimes it's important to remember or to call out they were talking about this one item as a because it's a representation of a larger consistent pattern that's going on. So underrepresentation, misrepresentation, what are the roles that people occupy? How do they what's what's the space that's allowed for people to provide certain roles or to step into certain roles? Um, so yeah, the examination of patterns. And then finally, it's like looking at audience response. So the article you're going to be um reading, which was a kind of a really important article or that's often cited. There's a couple of them. One of them was Radway reading the romance novel. So her investigation, ethnographic kind of uh, interviewing, talking with people, reading the romance novels and how people read the romance novel is being shaped by, you know, their gender or class or other kind of factors. Like how do people read, receive uh, the message? So the social position of the audience would be things like, you know, uh, their their race, ethnic background, their class position, their gender. There's certain things that, you know, are certain social positions may influence how a particular text is interpreted and read. Um, thinking about political, see, you know, when it's time for election season and seeing signage and politicians running ads and, you know, how people interpret those ads is going to be, of course, dependent upon influenced by their own party political affiliation, all right? So the social position of the audience is gonna make a difference in that interpretation. And again, we're going after looking at the pattern, not that everyone who occupies that particular social position provides the same interpretation or the same reading, but rather what's the dominant way? What's the consistent way? What's the message that people are interpreting uh, in general? <laughs> and one way to think about this is like reading the text, like we get the text, right? We get an image, an advertisement, that's the text. It's the color, it's the, it's like who's the, the individuals who are represented, their age, their gender, sexual orientation, their their race, their class position, how are they being represented? Uh, what's the language that's being used to talk, if there's language included within the text, what are the colors? Like how are people, and then how do people interpret? What is the meaning that they assign to that text? So the content for the week is uh, there's an article, Cowboys and Indians, Perceptions of Western Indi Western Films Among American Indians and Anglos, uh, 1992. I think a really interesting, easy to kind of get into article uh, that walks through about, you know, that the social position of being, um, being a Native American versus a, a white American and Anglo, different interpretations of watching the same film uh, just based on that social position. So I think it provides a great example of audience reception and then in the film, um, there's a lot of stuff going on there within the film um, about uh, all three elements of the tripartite, tripartite approach. There's, you'll get some about production of culture, get some about, definitely a lot about representation, uh, and maybe not as much on the audience reception. So uh, I think when you're making your applications to the film, uh, probably most political economy and textual analysis. All right, so enjoy the film. Uh, just a little bit of background and information just to kind of get you situated. Hope you enjoy the article as well. Have a wonderful rest of your day and uh, catch you next time.